I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another NetCast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. Sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 240, How to Filter Out Time on a Chart View. This is in response to a question I received from Eli at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com. And I really made my day to get his email. He sounds like he's a new Quantrix user. Uh, based off of his model, it looks like he's doing a great job with learning it. So kudos to you, Eli. And I'm more than happy to help you. Uh, learn Quantrix and anybody else, so please ask me your questions at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com. But on to Eli's question. He has a very basic model that he's created for me, and it has a matrix uh, for sales. And within that matrix, it uh, shows sales across year, month for some company, and the SKUs here, multiple SKUs. And then what we've created is a chart that shows these sales for these different SKUs over time. And what Eli wants to do is he wants to be able to filter out some of these dates because, uh, you know, maybe they're not practical or maybe there's no value or maybe he wants to show only a specific timeline within his chart view. So how does he do that uh, using Quantrix? Well, what I would do is I would recommend you go ahead and create another matrix up here. And we could rename this... Uh, this matrix the date filter all right and we will call this uh, start date end date and since we're doing this by month i'm just going to have every date be the first of the month and i'm going to manually do that of course you could set up the model so it would do that for you autom automatically but i'm just going to manually do it and say my first date is 5 1 of 2016 and my last one is going to be 5 1 of 2017 and we'll just call these inputs here. And then down here in the sales matrix, because uh, the sales chart two is really just a chart view of the sales matrix, this is where I need to be making my changes is down here in sales. What I would go ahead and do is I would actually add a new column or a new uh, category tile rather. And I'd call this one maybe raw data. And then I would hit enter, add a new item and call this uh, display. And what I want to do is I want to bring into my display column or my display row or my display item any of those uh, values that have a, a fiscal date or a timeline date, right, that is between these two dates. And then that is what I'm going to display up here on the top. So uh, for display, I would say display equals is between what? The value, what value do I want to look at? Well, I want to look at the value that I'm on or the date that I'm on, which would be the first of every month listed here if I were to use the timeline date function. And you've seen me probably use that a time or two before in Quantrix Modeler. So I'm going to do timeline date, which is essentially going to bring back 4 1 2016, 5 1 2016, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then what is my low value? My low value is my start date, and what is my high value? It is uh, the end date, and then if I wanted this to be inclusive so that it would include both May and uh, both May of 2016 and May of 2017, I'd go ahead and put one for inclusive. And then when I go ahead and I do that, it gives me true and falses, right? But aside from that, I then need to multiply this by the raw data and when I do that you'll see that then display then populates here then what happens is I go up to my chart and let's see if we can get this one right I would maybe rename category C I'll just call this value type kicks and giggles and I'll bring them up to the filter tray and I will say give me display data and you can see that when it's filtered for display data, indeed, it is showing me from uh, May 2016 through May 2017. If I were to go out here and I were to change this, say, to 6-1 of 2017, it shows me all the way through 6-1 of 2017. And let's say I wanted to go to 1-1 one, one of 2017 and display that. You can see that, indeed, it is... Uh, 
filtering out the dates and displaying them exactly as I would expect them to display. And then maybe uh, I would go ahead and color these input cells, you know, some blue just because I like that color of blue as my input cells. Anyway, Eli, I really appreciate you uh, asking me this question. Uh, congratulations on discovering Quantrix. I encourage you to keep asking me questions and I'll try to make videos for you and anybody out there. If you have any questions about Quantrix, it is an awesome tool. Please reach out to me at quantrixauthority at gmail.com. I want to make you a Quantrix master. So please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by quantrixauthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.